Because to us, these are the same thing. Okay? When we're when the kids are testing the limits and we're setting them and establishing what's acceptable and what's not, what we're really doing is that meaning business thing. Is that the kids know, hey, I better not go any farther. This is, you know, this is for real. But we also look at meaning business in another way. And this way isn't as direct a link to limit setting, but we tend to use it synonymously. And the way we look at meaning business is also stress management. Because what goes along with meaning business is stress. And we can try and manage our stress at the end of the day. I mean, how many of us have gone home at the end of the day and just been shot from a day of teaching? You know, just <laughs> exhausted. That's not how you want to spend your life. And if 80% of all disruptions in your classroom are goofing off, that's where the game is played. So that's where we focus our limit setting, how to mean business. It's dealing with goofing off because it's those little disruptions all day long that are gonna send you home tired. Like Fred said, he can sit in your classroom for six weeks and not say, see you send one kid to the, to the principal's office. Yet every day, all day long, kids are goofing off, they're off task, they're talking when they're not supposed to be talking. So let me ask you a question. If I'm up here in front of the classroom, and I'm teaching my lesson, and a couple kids back there start goofing off, does that bug you? Yeah, it bugs you. It gets under your skin. And if you don't deal with it and manage that, then it just builds and builds all day long. So you can try and manage it when you get home. Some of us go for a jog when we get home just to kind of get the sweat and get the day out of us. Some of us do yoga to try and relax. Some of us have a glass of wine. Sometimes you have a second glass of wine. <laughs> but this is not stress management. That is damage control. The damage has been done. True stress management happens moment by moment minute by minute, all day long. Because when those kids bug you, you reach that state of bug. What's really happening is you're having a small fight flight reflex. Now, we're all familiar with the fight flight reflex from our high school biology courses. Some of us may teach it. It's that uh, uh, reflex, it's part of our biology, that when we're in danger, or if something is out of the ordinary, we have to figure out, are we going to have to fight or are we going to have to run? Now, the biological way that we are wired is for survival. And so if the saber-toothed tiger is about to attack, you're going to have a large-scale fight-flight reflex. But in the classroom, it's not life or death, necessarily. It's bugged. That's where it starts. Now, it can grow from that, but we don't manage it well. But we are reaching that state of bug when kids are off task, when they're talking to neighbors, when they're doing something they're not supposed to do, up out of seat, all the stuff we talked about goofing off, that kind of big umbrella term, gets you to that state of bug. So let's look at the fight flight reflex and what it does to our bodies. There is a physical response. And the first physical response is muscle tension. When the saber-toothed tiger is about to attack, your muscles tense. Your quadriceps flex, you get down into a crouch position so you can bolt out of there if you need to. Your, your biceps flex so it brings your arms up and then you're ready to do a defensive or a running or a fighting position. But in the classroom, you get a little stressed and where does it start? So if it, in the neck, it starts here. You ever been up so upset that you just find that your teeth are clenched? You know? And large part of meaning business and stress management is body language. 
So if you're stressed out and you're upset in the classroom and you've got that clenched jaw, the kids can see it from all the way across the room. They can see that you're upset. So the physical part of it is that your muscles are tensing all day long. Sometimes you feel it in your neck at the end of the day. Sometimes you, well, some of us might wear a bike plate at night you know, because we're grinding our teeth, because that stress is just seeping through into the rest of our lives. So, muscle tension is just the start, but that's gonna send you all tired in itself. But there's a verbal component, because your body needs to relieve that stress. And if the stress manifests itself first in the jaw, then what do you have to move? Your jaw. So this is what the fight flight reflex sounds like. Would you two turn around and get back to work? This is not the time to be talking. Now, could you, could you sit down? Nag, nag, nag. 